Hi everybody, happy Wednesday, Drew here, and I am excited to share with you that I am beginning a new little YouTube project, um, nothing too, too crazy uh, in terms of length, but an exciting one and one that I have been really passionate about since the beginning of the year. So working title, Cozy Candle Wednesdays. Um, we'll see if this holds, but kind of my unofficial goal is to do a really small, short podcast each Wednesday morning. Um, I'm a morning person, so the morning part's not going to be the hard part. Um, it's just planning and making sure that I make space for it. But um, I'm really excited, and I've been. I had. Uh, I I did a few posts at the beginning of the year on Instagram. Uh, when I was just first getting into candles in the winter and then summer happened and uh, we're back to fall and into winter again. So I thought this would be a really good time to do something in a video format. I think sometimes it's hard to engage with the, um, the Instagram, just photo posts. Uh, and I don't know, Instagram's a little weird. Like they're trying to pull us into reels and they're trying to pull us into like videos, but then you have limits on all of those. I'm going to do my best to connect Instagram to the YouTube place where all of these videos are going to live and um, just make it easy, but it's hard. I'm not very good at like the making like the real sleek tech stuff. Anyway, back to the subject. So um, in each of these videos, I'm just going to profile one candle that I really love. Maybe I will actually talk about some that I don't like as much, but um, that's kind of a weird one because like, do you buy a candle that you don't really like? Not usually, but sometimes it doesn't turn out exactly as you would have hoped. Um, but without further ado, um, the candle that I'm going to be reviewing today, I'm going to totally butcher it, Faux de Bois. And this is from Diptyque. Um, and those of you who are familiar with what I call bougie candles, candles that like for like a regular non-candle snob, they would look at the price and be like, oh my God, I can't believe you spent that on a candle. This is <laughs> at the top end of the bougie factor. I think these, I can't remember exactly, but I think I want to say these are between 60 and $80 for one. Um, and this is something like, let's see. Let's look at the bottom. Um, 6.5 ounces. It's made in France. Um, I could be wrong about this, but one of the things that I think a lot of people don't realize about candles is like many of the companies just use like standard fragrances and essential oils. And then there are a few, most of them are on the higher end of the spectrum where they actually make their own perfume blends. Um, so Diptyque is one of those. It's one of the reasons why it's a little bit expensive. So let me talk about a few things, and this will kind of set the table for how I'll review candles going forward. So let's first talk about um, the vessel. So it comes in just a very small and simple glass vessel. Um, this is just a sticker, <laughs> but it is applied well, and there are no bubbles or anything, so it's really nice. Um, it's kind of, it, it's, it's smaller than some candles you would see. Um, now some of the aspects of this candle that I, um, really like is it has a nice cold throw and cold throw means the fragrance that it emits when it's not lit. It's not overpowering and you're not going to smell it from like a mile away. Some candles you do, you, you can like, they fill a room even when they're not um, lit. This just has a very light um, fragrance. It smells absolutely divine. So I should have said at the beginning, um, this is a fireplace candle. Uh, so it's meant to give you that, um, that, that fragrance or scent that would remind you of being around like a campfire or fireplace. Um, and the thing I would say about fragrances like that, to me personally, it's such a hard art. Like 
if you think about something like a fireplace or a Christmas tree or a sugar cookie or, you know, cinnamon apples, like these are kind of common things that you see in candle form. To me, I would say 80% of them are either not enough fragrance where you're like, I don't smell anything, or it's like on the opposite end where it's like super artificial, really sweet, or, you know, in the case of a fireplace candle, like way too smoky or it just doesn't smell quite right. This is so beautiful. Like it hits fireplace dead on for me, but the fragrance is also, um, there's enough complexity behind it where it doesn't just smell like your house is filled with smoke, if that makes sense. It doesn't smell like everything's just like burning and on fire, which again, some like smoky, ashy fireplace candles like smell just like everything just smells like smoke. Um, yeah, there's something about this one. It's got like a, I would almost say like a spicy undertone to it that I really, really enjoy. A few other things about this candle that I think uh, you should be aware of. So as I said before, this candle is a little bit smaller than some of the other ones. But what I would say is I have burned this probably... 40 hours, 50 hours, and I still have, I would say maybe an inch or maybe a smidge more of wax. So that's actually really, really good. What's beautiful about this candle is the wax, I don't know if this is the right way to describe it, but it's hard. So when you light it, it takes it a long time to, for the wax pool to completely melt. And I really like that. Um, because it's not just burning away very quickly. Like other candles, you know, you burn it for a few hours and it's like, they're just toast. Um, they just burn really quickly. So that goes back to the price. Like, so you might say, oh, I'm hesitant to spend that much on a candle, but it's really, you're getting a lot out of it. So I, I would say that. The other thing that I'm just personally really picky about is tunneling. So a lot of candles, and I don't have one handy, I wish I did, um, they'll do something called tunneling where, and I'm sure if you have candles, you've seen this before, they kind of, um, burrow in the center and then you've got like this edge of unmelted unmel wax. This candle, for the most part, you can see it burns really clean. Um, like it's not perfect. Like I've got some edges like right there a little bit, but by and large, if it was tunneling, you'd see wax up to here and then inside you would see like a burrow um, where it had burned. So I'm really pleased with that because again, not all candles have a clean burn. Um, a lot of candle companies now are going to a two wick design. This is just a one wick um, to make sure that the whole, you know, kind of the whole diameter of the candle will burn. That's one other thing I would say too is um, kind of a plus on the small size is that it is one wick, but because the diameter this way is not too wide, it allows the whole surface of the um, candle wax to melt. So anyway, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to tell you about this candle. Where can you get it? That's a good question. And maybe just a little bit more about Diptyque. I'm trying to keep these under 10 minutes. So getting close, probably won't succeed on that today, but that's okay. So Diptyque you can find in most department stores. Like I, um, this one, my beautiful, wonderful friend, Cassie gave me this one for my birthday. Um, but you can get them at like Nordstrom's, Bloomingdale's, Saks, like places like that. You can order online. One of the things that's really unique about Diptyque candles is that they also have a city line, but it's only in, you can only get those candles when you're in a diptyque location in those cities and they're all over the world. So I don't actually have one of those. I would love one. Um, New York, Miami and Beverly Hills, I think are the ones that they have for the U S and then there's like Tokyo, Berlin, Paris, a few others that I'm free, London. Um, that are international. One time a year, Diptyque allows you to order those candles online. I actually missed it. I wasn't like big into Diptyque at that, uh, at that time. So that's my review. So overall, 
strong recommendation. This is probably in my top five candles that I like. Like this will be something that um, I will definitely keep in the rotation. It is definitely good for fall and winter. And yeah. Um, so let me know what you guys think about this or if you have any other questions about candles in general. Each time I'll try to drop uh, a little bit of candle knowledge. Like today I talked about cold throw and hot throw. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll just share what I've learned. It's, it's interesting, like burning candles seems very simple, but there's actually like a little bit of art to it so that you can get the most out of your candles uh, for the, like the best experience. If there are other candles that you'd like me to review, drop um, a comment uh, and just let me know what you think about this overall. I'm going to try to do one each Wednesday, like I said, real short, uh, and we'll go from there. So I hope you all have a beautiful Wednesday. Make sure to make time for yourself. Make sure to give yourself a little indulgence, like a candle or whatever it might be for you, and make your space cozy. Uh, that's been a big goal for me this year. I'm working from home now 100% of the time. So I'm trying to find little tiny things I can do in my space. And I'm always in this space, like a lot of like hours and hours every day, every <laughs> five days a week, uh, just to make it feel fresh and inviting. So anyway, love you all. Be well. Talk soon. See you soon. Oh, and now I've got to figure out my my camera situation. Embrace the mistakes, people. One take. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Bye.